All right, so what we got here today is a 1985 BMW 735i, it's E23 chassis. Um, this is going to be a start of a long repair on it, which will be the entire HVAC system rebuild. Uh, that'll be the dash out, center console out, the whole HVAC box out, uh, EVAP out, the receiver dryer up front, the expansion valve under here in the dash, um, and a sanding compressor upgrade. But to start off everything, uh, right now I'm about to open up the hood and remove the remove the fan, the blower motor. Now the blower motor on these cars lives inside the cowl here, uh, underneath this plastic grate and underneath this removable metal panel. Uh, you don't really need any special tools to do this job. A set of screwdrivers, a pair of pliers uh, will go a long way. Um, I already do have, I already actually went in there and replaced it. Here's the old blower motor. Uh, the customer did go ahead and buy a brand new one. This is the part number for it right here. 6411136183. Uh, you can actually still get these from uh, places like the dealership or FCP Euro if you want a lifetime warranty on them. Uh, they are pricey, but you can get them. Uh, I got one for my own personal car as well. I did that a while back. Uh, highly recommend if you're going to be spending four or five hundred bucks anyways, might as well spend a little bit extra and get the lifetime warranty, which is why I did and what my customer here did. Anyways, um, I went ahead and replaced it already, as I said. That means I have most of the parts that uh, get down to it still removed. But I did put the panels back in just so I can kind of show the process here. Start off with, we remove this rubber weather strip right here. This is just the normal weather strip for the engine bay. Just pull it right off, slide over to the side. Hey, cool. All right, so over to the side and then we can start pulling this metal panel. This metal panel will have a clip right here, two screws in the middle, and then another clip on the end, as well as a few clips right in front here. So to get those out, you can use a pick or a flathead screwdriver, either one of these. Um, I already have these Phillips head screws backed out, so it's kind of loose already. And this right here, well, this usually pops out and stays in the metal, <clears throat> the metal cover right here. There'll be this metal clip right here, which you just push back and lift up and do the same thing for right here. Push back and lift up and it'll pop off. You have to kind of work it behind the wiper arm and just pop it up and it comes out. It has these little plastic tabs right here uh, that sit in these grooves. So you kind of want to pop it up, work it out, and it'll eventually come out without breaking. Same thing on this side, you have this metal clip, which is, I did not pop all the way back in, but it pops right in there. You normally just pull it up. Then you get metal tab number one, metal tab number two. And you can move the wiper arm up a little bit. Kind of work it out and pull it out like that. Once again, has these plastic clips that just sit in the back to locate it. <clears throat> At this point, you'd normally go ahead and remove the plastic screw or the, uh, the metal screws that hold it in right here. Uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then one on the far end, just like you have right here. I have all those removed still. Uh, this screw right here that would be in for the plastic grill that we just pulled out would have to come out if you, if it wasn't already pulled out when you did that. And then you have one, two screws on this side, then one, two over here, and that's everything that you need to pull. Now this metal panel has vacuum pods attached to the bottom side of it with vacuum lines on it, so you can't just pull it out and rip it off to the side. Uh, you'll have to just pop it up and out and set it right here. That's all you really need to do. So you can work it around with wiper arms up in the air or down below, just whatever makes it easier for you. 
it kind of sits in these little channels right here. So you pop up. Then you pop up on this side. When you get that out, you don't want to just keep rotating it out. You kind of want to work the front out. So you just kind of have to work at it. Get the front end popped up and out of this little channel right here. Then you just kind of pull back a little bit and set to the side. Now, it does have these vacuum pots, as I said, you don't want to break those. It also has the wiper uh, washers, the nozzles on here, which you see those lines feeding in from the side, limits its travel. So once you get to this point, you have your blower motor. Your blower motor is sitting right here. Um, normally they're held in with these metal bands that wrap around the, the HVAC box, which is, which is sitting at the bottom here. But a lot of the times they break over the years and people who have come in here in the past have already broken them. So the owner put these rubber hoses in to hold the blower motor covers tight to the, to the box again. So I just went ahead and put them back in just the way the owner had it. But since this blower has to come out once again, because I'm pulling the actual box uh, to reseal the firewall and also replace the EVAP in the heater core, it all has to come apart. So remove the hold downs, whether it be the metal strips or something else that's been jerry-rigged, unplug everything and these plugs love to stick in here. Let me see if I can get something to pop them loose. I usually just do a gentle tap until I can see them start popping out. Just like that. There's one. And then there is two. There we go. Both are freed. Remove the electrical connections. Remove the relays that are stuck to the side of this. Uh, I forget what the other relay is, but one is for your blower motor, so that's where your relay sits. Then here are your actual blower motor connections. You want to unplug them. Then you have a little temp probe in here, or uh, just a little probe of some sort. Then you have your uh, evap probe sitting right there so you'll so far probably want a flathead screwdriver phillips screwdriver and a needle nose pair of pliers which is what i have these for just makes it easier to reach down in here and pop this pop these two lines off now you have the color green going to the engine bay side you have color white going towards the cabin side uh basically you just pull them straight off and then straight off and your wiring is basically removed i usually just put that here underneath the windshield wiper at this point you'll want to get these little metal covers pulled out of the way they have a metal clip there a metal clip there pull these out set them to the side and i say these because there's one on each side well there's supposed to be one on this side but it's missing Here's metal clip for it, and the other one would be down here. Uh, what's next? Next, we start removing blur motor housing. So these are three pieces per side. So you have this outer piece, you have this top piece, and you have a little inner piece that's kind of a half circle. So first, once these clips are removed, there's bracket for the clip that used to be there, and you know these rubber hoses that I pulled out. Once those are removed, this thing just is free. So we pop it up. Once this is popped up, we pop up the side and work it out. Work it out. It has a couple plastic clips that just clip around all the edges here. And notice there is a flat side. The flat side goes down along the uh, firewall. So it kind of sits and locates when it sits into the groove here. Once that's pulled out, you have this half moon that rides on this side of the cover. If you don't remove this before you start trying to pull the cover off, you will not get it past the fan. Now, once you're to this point, this is free, but is uh, you need to be careful about removing it past the blower motor because it can be a pain a little bit to not get caught on the fan blades. See, we're actually caught right here. So you have to gently work it back and forth and get up and out. Once you have it off to the side like this, 
Uh, once again, you can't really pull it out. So what you do, rotate it sideways, and then you just work it out. Everything does come out. You don't need to force it. Uh, just have to be careful with it. It is old brittle plastic, so it will love to break. So this side, once again, we'll go over the steps, remove your bracketry, whatever is not here, whether it be this or the metal clips, pull up the top cover, remove the outside cover. It has that flat spot that sits against the firewall. You lift this up and you remove the half moon on the inside. And then you start lifting this up as high as you can and working it past the blower motor blades, which on this side is a little bit di more difficult just because it has these metal tabs staying in the way. And you do have to work it past the various obstacles in here. The right or the driver's side one here, uh, you will actually want to get all the way out of the way, just like so. Mainly because once you have your blower motor exposed, you cannot just lift it up and out because the squirrel cages do not fit past these points. So next we will get our eight millimeter and actually a screwdriver because this, this little bracket here has been broken off in the back and somebody has put a screw in the backside to hold it in. Normally it's just a plastic tang thing inside a piece of plastic so you can normally just undo these eight millimeters and rotate that bracket up and out of the way and slide the blower motor past but we have to take off both front and back sides at this point. So I have my little eight millimeter with extensions here. Then let's get a Phillips head screwdriver. This will work. All right. So these eight millimeters here screw into the HVAC blower box, which is, you know, the very top side of the box here. Um, on this particular car, this bracket was actually broken off, had the broken off tab plastic here, which held everything in place. So it got glued back in place. So I have to be very ginger with it. Um, it also holds the temp probe for your EVAP in place. So uh, you want to make sure not to pull that out with the blow motor, because that is a pain to get back into there and not have it uh, bent up the probe. So we just kind of slide that forward off to the side and this is normally easily gotten out of the way without removing a screw in the back here. But I will loosen it up so we can get a little bit more room. Let's see. Uh, that should be enough to work with. All right, once you're to this point, the blower mower will come up and out usually. Let's, there we go. There's a little bit of glue stuck on the bottom side of it, so that's why it wants to stick in there. Oh, looks like a screw did come out after all. Nice. All right, so we have the blow mower lifted partially out. As you can see, it does not come out past the uh, past the firewall and past this bit of the metal trim on the body. So what we normally do is pull it up a little bit, sneak it over. There we are. Sometimes, well, sometimes you can get away without removing the bottom half moons as well, which I just did. Uh, sometimes it is easier to go ahead and pull them. As you can see, it's not always necessary. To put this back in, it's the same idea. You kind of put it in through this hole here, then slide sideways, put it in like this, then slide sideways down over there, and just go in reverse order. Uh, pretty quick job once you realize that it all comes out a certain way. And the blower motor does sit in here one particular way. You can see this bulge on blower motor sits towards the passenger side. If you have it uh, sitting the wrong way, it will be reverse rotation for the fan, so you don't want to have that. Uh, so bulge on the motor, bloater motor um, goes towards the passenger side of the car. The red and black hookups are pretty obvious over on your power here. Black goes black, the red sides go to oh, wherever, wherever did it go goes to a green and brown power supply. Pretty quick and simple job.